Have you ever seen the movie about the Alamo? Maybe you caught it on TV or found it online. It's from the 1960s, and it's got a lot of interesting stuff in it. There are funny moments, shocking scenes, and some really sad parts. So, if you're into that kind of thing, stick around. You might learn some cool facts. When did you first watch this movie? Maybe it was with your family or some friends. Let us know in the comments below. So, what makes this movie stand the test of time? Well, it's got a gripping story and some memorable characters. Plus, it's based on a real event, which adds to its appeal. People love movies that bring history to life. Do you have any special memories connected to this movie? Share them with us in the comments. We'd love to hear your stories. All right, get ready for some interesting facts about the movie. There's a lot to unpack, so stay tuned. In the world of classic Hollywood, there's a film that stands out for its grand storytelling and memorable characters. For someone like me, who has a connection to a legendary figure portrayed in this movie, watching it is more than just entertainment. It's a link to my own family history. However, when viewed through today's lens, some parts of this movie might feel outdated or stereotypical, especially in how it portrays minority characters. Nevertheless, despite its flaws, this film remains captivating. The cast, which includes well-known actors like John Wayne and Richard Widmark, delivers performances that elevate the movie above its imperfections. The passion project of its director, this movie tells the heroic story of a group facing off against formidable opponents. A significant aspect of this film is its remarkable musical score, which adds depth to the emotional journey depicted on screen. The breathtaking scenery captured by the cinematography also helps transport viewers into the setting of the Texas frontier. While the movie might sometimes feel overly patriotic and not entirely accurate historically, it serves as a reminder of the sacrifices made by those who fought for freedom. Despite its faults, this film endures as a classic in cinematic history, offering both entertainment and a glimpse into America's past. In conclusion, this movie is worth watching for its outstanding performances, epic scale, and lasting impact on the world of film. During the production of The Alamo, John Wayne selected Denver Pyle as the official set photographer due to his impressive photography skills. Hank Worden, often mistakenly credited for a role in The Quiet Man, clarified that it was another actor with a similar appearance. Richard Widmark gained fame in 1947 with his role in Kiss of Death, earning an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor for his portrayal of the psychopathic Tommy Udo. He enjoyed a successful five-decade-long film career. In the world of movies, there are some interesting connections worth knowing about. One actor, known for his roles in crime films, inspired another actor to choose a specific name for his writing. There's also a family with a history of living long lives, one member of which had a brother involved in animation and was related to a famous journalist. Another actor received recognition for a role in a film, which was his only nomination for a prestigious award. These connections show how diverse talents and influences have shaped the stories told in movies over time. Constructing the famous Alamo set for the 1960 movie was a big task that took two years to finish. They wanted it to look just like the real battleground, paying close attention to every detail. Ken Curtis, who played Festus Hagen on Gunsmoke, had a unique way of handling guns. Even though he was right-handed, he would hold the rifle to his left shoulder and use his left hand to shoot because his left eye was stronger. Other famous actors like Clint Eastwood, Steve McQueen, Sidney Poitier, and David Caruso also used similar techniques in their roles. John Wayne, who played a big part in the Alamo, was honored with a special stamp in Hollywood. The stamp, worth 37 cents, and released on 9994, showed Wayne and was revealed at Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. In short, making the Alamo movie set took a lot of time and effort, and actors like Ken Curtis had their unique ways of doing things. John Wayne's recognition with a stamp in Hollywood further shows his importance in the movie industry. John Wayne had initially considered James Arnaz for the role of Sam Houston, but Arnaz's absence during an interview led to Richard Boone's casting. This absence strained Wayne's relationship with Arnaz. Beyond the famous Underground Railroad heading north, there existed another lesser-known route leading south to Mexico for freedom seekers, even after the events at the Alamo. Jack Pennock, a former Marine, served in World War I, World War II, in the Banana Wars, earning a Silver Star during World War II despite enlisting at almost 50 years old. John Wayne, known for his role in Rio Bravo, strategically cast singer Frankie Avalon in the Alamo, aiming to draw in younger audiences. 
Avalon's performance impressed Wayne, who praised him as a natural talent. Despite the film's portrayal, Jim Bowie had resigned from the Texian rebel forces prior to the siege of Bixar. The movie, marked by John Wayne's staunch patriotism, emphasized an us versus the narrative, reflecting Wayne's political inclinations during Hollywood's 1950s Red Scare. These elements, including Davy Crockett's fervor for the word republic, underscored Wayne's deliberate thematic choices. Richard Widmark, featured in Bad Boys, the actors of film noir by Karen Burroughs Hansberry. John Wayne admired the Kingston Trio's rendition of Remember the Alamo, but couldn't secure its rights for the movie. Instead, Dimitri Chomkin and Paul Francis Webster composed The Green Leaves of Summer. The opening credits feature Chomkin's variation of the bugle call El Digello, originally played at the Alamo. The threat behind El Digello, meaning throat cutting, was realized when all defenders were killed. Yonkin's music was reused from Rio Bravo, where it symbolized impending danger, mirroring the fate of those at the Alamo. John Wayne, initially approached to play Marshal Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke in the mid-1950s, declined the offer due to his commitment to movie roles. However, he recommended his friend James Arnaz for the part and made an on-camera introduction in the pilot episode. Despite never being offered a TV series in that era, Wayne's influence extended to supporting his peers. Although uncredited, John Ford received $100,000 from Bad Jack, Wayne's production company, for his contributions to the film. As a tribute to his supporting cast, various members of the Wayne Stock Company were given individual death scenes in the Alamo. These included Chill Wills, Denver Pyle, Ken Curtis, Gin Williams, Chuck Robertson, Tom Hennessy, and Jester Hairston. Richard Widmark hailed from Sunrise, Minnesota. His father, Carl Widmark, started as a store manager before becoming a traveling salesman. Eventually, the family settled in Princeton, Illinois, where his father owned a downstairs bakery. As for Lawrence Harvey, his daughter Domino Harvey was born out of wedlock in Belgravia, London. This happened on August 7, 1969, to Vogue model Pauline Stone. Domino was the result of a three-year-long affair between Harvey and Stone during his second marriage to American multimillionaire Joan Cohn, the former Joan Perry, who was 17 years his senior. Harvey later divorced Cohn and married Stone shortly before his death from stomach cancer in 1973. During filming of the movie, Harvey faced a serious injury. It occurred in late 1959 when a cannon fire recoiled and landed on his foot, breaking it in several places. Witnesses reported that Harvey, with director and actor John Wayne by his side, finished the scene and only collapsed in agony after the cameras stopped rolling. Two renowned actors from the past, Richard Widmark and Henry Fonda, starred in a series of five films together. They shared the screen in movies like Warlock, How the West Was Won, Madigan, Roller Coaster, and The Swarm. They had great chemistry on screen, which audiences loved. During filming, there was a funny incident involving Richard Boone, who played General Houston. He showed up on the first day with a full beard, only to realize his character was supposed to be clean-shaven. It was a humorous moment behind the scenes. The main theme, Green Leaves of Summer from the Alamo, was so moving that it made its way into the opening titles of Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards. This shows how impactful cinematic music can be. The movie, with its memorable characters and scenes, continues to influence different generations. Whether it's the performances of Widmark and Fonda, the unexpected moments during filming, or the timeless music, the Alamo story lives on in Hollywood history, preserved through film.